Welcome to this presentation and demonstration of Oracle Advanced Analytics, an option to the Oracle database. And in this scenario, we're going to look at how we use data mining uh, functions that are embedded natively inside the Oracle database in a remote service delivery scenario where we're taking data off the uh, Hadoop servers in real time. We're streaming that into the uh, into the Hadoop system. We're taking it off sensors into the Hadoop system. We're going to collect and organize that data using uh, uh, the big data appliance. We're going to use Hive to bring that data uh, and organize it and load it into the Oracle database and that's where we're going to perform the analysis. We're going to use the in database a library of uh, very powerful machine learning techniques that uh, embody the Oracle advanced analytics option to find patterns, find relationships, um, and then we're going to apply those uh, predictive models to data either in batch or in real time, and then we're going to leave those results in the database so that Oracle uh, Indeca or Oracle Business Intelligence uh, can take a look at them in other graphs and visualizations. My name is Charlie Berger. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management for Data Mining and Advanced Analytics at Oracle. So again, to summarize, we're going to acquire the data in real-time data streams into Hadoop. We're going to organize the data using Hive queries where we're going to create tables and load it into the database. We're going to analyze the data using the powerful in-database data mining capabilities that come with the Oracle Advanced Analytics option. And then we're going to look at uh, results in another dashboard using Indeca to visualize, uh, drill down, and so on. And we could also use Oracle Business Intelligence for that. The Oracle Advanced Analytics option is very uh, uh, powerful, uh, very easy to use. It's what we call the fastest way to deliver scalable enterprise-wide predictive analytics, where you can build, uh, find, be make better decisions with deeper insights using the predictive analytics for a variety of different customer problems, including churn, fraud, cross, so and so on. Here we're monitoring sensor data coming off a number of different devices. We're going to collect and gather that data, look for patterns and relationships to try and reduce the amount of uh, errors that we're having. Uh, all of this is provided in a comprehensive architecture, um, comprehensive uh, uh, analytics uh, solution on a very, very simple architecture. And you can access these functions using SQL. We've also integrated with open source R, so you can use the R language to access these as well, and then additional uh, callouts to R. And you can also use the graphical uh, Oracle Data Miner user interface, which is what I'm going to show uh, in the process of this demo. And by putting this all together in one uh, simpler architecture, that is the Oracle database, we provide the lowest total cost of ownership. There is no need for separate analytical servers. And so the scenario that we're going to do here is we're going to first take a look at the data that's been pulled into the Oracle database. We're going to explore some of that data using graphs and visualization techniques. We're going to do some preparations and transformations of that data. We're going to build a variety of different predictive models. Once we find a model that we like, it could be multiple models, we're going to apply those models to uh, uh, new data, and then we're going to be able to uh, deploy those models uh, by generating SQL scripts. So let's cut over to the demo. And for that, we're going to look at uh, Oracle Data Miner. It's part of the SQL developer user interface. And in that, what we've done is we've set up um, workflows. And here is a very simple workflow where I have my uh, pallets or my, uh, my nodes that I'm going to use for my analysis over here on the right-hand side. And I have my data over here. So I have some data that I've brought in. If we take a quick look at this data, it is data about the uh, sensors, that uh, the sensor data that's coming off the different devices. So we have the uh, uh, asset ID, the name of the asset. We have the uh, uh, percent utilization. We have the uh, temperatures that are being collected along the way. We have uh, uh, the heat and cool monitor status, a number of different readings, the experience of the technicians. So we have a number of different fields of information uh, that are telling us uh, um, the status of these devices. And what we're going to do is, uh, and by the way, we're leaving little SQL breadcrumbs as we go through this analysis. So we're going to look at this data first. Uh, I'm going to skip this data preparation because there's a, a variety of different things you could do here in the data preparation. And we're going to kind of uh, leave that uh, uh, as something we can go into a little bit uh, later on with a little bit more time. But we can, we can take the data. We can do different transformations on that data. Say so as right here, we've set up a, uh, a transformation. There's a lot of different... Uh, uh, things you can do this by do with uh, the data transformations because it's all inside the Oracle database. It's very powerful, very easy, and behind the scenes, it's using the very powerful SQL. 
to do all that. So we've also set up some analysis where we're trying to look at patterns. And here we have the different types of uh, uh, units that we have, large commercial units, medium commercial units. We have uh, large campuses uh, that are using our HVAC machines. And we have um, various different visualizations of that. We also have statistical summaries of what's going on uh, uh, in uh, each of those different uh, uh, systems. So we have min, max, standard deviation, and so on. And again, behind the scenes, we're doing all that with, uh, with SQL. So I'm going to go back here and look at uh, this also by failure type, which is kind of more interesting. That's more apropos to what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to see where we have high volumes of failures. And here we have a lot more failures uh, where the temperature is, the internal temperature is between 71 and 85. And if we go through here and look at the outside temperature, and look at a number of different settings here, we sort of are struggling to try and find if there's any correlations, any patterns. And I think the idea here is that even though we have very, partially because we have a very low incidence of failures, it's a, it's a little bit hard to try and find, you know, what might be the culprit here. Is the building type? Is the years of experience? Is it how much the uh, equipment's being used? Um, is that it's a hot area that cools a lot or a cool area that heats a lot? It could be a variety of different kind of... Uh, scenarios in play here. So we are also going to use uh, some functions here to uh, look at, see if we can find those variables that are most um, uh, uh, correlated with uh, the target uh, field uh, failure or not. But we're also going to look for missing values and constants, do a little bit of sort of automated uh, cleanup here. I just want to touch upon that. Here's where we're doing the brute force, the, the, the large amount of work. We've built a number of different models here. And when we go to, to do this, it's very simple. We have our target field as failure, and we have a number of different models here. So if I want to do, a say, a decision tree, I can go in here and, and set the settings for that decision tree. I can also set the settings for the uh, naive Bayes algorithm, also the generalized linear, mo generalized linear model, uh, logistic regression models that we're going to build. And so we have a number of different uh, advanced features. We also have the very powerful support vector machine algorithm, which is very... Uh, very, very uh, powerful for, for finding uh, patterns and relationships and can handle uh, large amounts of input attributes. So we're going to build a number of different models. Um, let's go take a look at those models real quickly. So we've built a few different models. We're going to compare those models. They all look like they've done a pretty good job here. It looks like the GLM model and the decision tree model have both done quite well. If I look at the, uh, the lift curve, which really shows us the incremental predictive power of having run these models, we can see that the... Uh, uh, the red, the uh, GLM models, also the decision trees, all of them have done a, a pretty good job. And depending on on uh, how deep uh, into my uh, uh, HVAC machines I want to dive, I can find uh, very quickly most of those units that I predict are going to, yes, have a problem and have some sort of failure. So we also can look at the um, performance matrix, which is showing us for each of the different types of models, how well do they predict, yes, there's going to be a failure? So the naive Bayes model does a real nice job. They all do a pretty nice job. And the, the idea of building multiple models is to have confidence that your model is good. And also, maybe you want to apply a variety of models. But oftentimes, sometimes, uh, oftentimes people also like to look at the models to see see the, the, uh, the ability to interpret the model. So here we have a, a uh, decision tree model, which starts with the overall entire population. And it starts to make these splits. And we start to see that. If it's in certain states, then um, we start to see whether we have an increased. Here we have very few failures. But if we come over to this side here, we start to see just a few more failures, that little bit of green right there. As we keep on kind of cascading down a little bit further and a little bit further, we can kind of finally come down to the very end over here where we see, uh, oh, here's one right here that says, if the state is in California, Florida, Illinois, Massachusetts, New York, and Texas, and the internal temperature is somewhere between 68 and 93, and the technician doesn't have that much experience. And the outside temperature is, you know, fairly coolish. Uh, well, not not that uh, not that cold per se. Then I found a condition or a scenario where I have uh, uh, more um, uh, failures, and in this case, I have a 51% uh, confidence. So on something that's happening less than 5% of the time, I found a pocket of uh, conditions where I actually have a quite an increased uh, rate of uh, failure. So what I'm going to do. Now is I'm going to take that model, I'm going to apply it to some new records here. So I'm going to set this up so that uh, I'm going to make a prediction of which records are likely to be the, the, the ones that are going to have a problem. I'm going to apply those models to the new records which are coming in here. And then when I'm done, what I've been able to do is create a list 
of uh, records or um, in this case um, piece of equipment that have the highest uh, likelihood to have a problem. And so if I say here I want to say the prediction is yes so I want to do these descending and the probability is also descending. If I sort this that's all just a table inside the Oracle database so it's very easy to sort and so now I'm going to get a listing in priority order of those units that are most likely to uh, experience some sort of uh, failure. If I can use the past as a predictor of the future, then, um, then I can see which units are most likely to be problematic. And here I am uh, uh, scoring uh, uh, quite a few records, but I'm also going across the wire, so it's taking just a little bit longer to do that. But uh, uh, here are the units that have a yes and the highest probability, and I also see the rest of the information here. So I've been able to build a predictive model and, um, and deploy it now. One last trick I want to show here is if I want to deploy this, I can also generate the SQL script to a clipboard. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come up here to a uh, to an open uh, window of um, of a SQL uh, developer here, and I'm going to paste that uh, uh, SQL script that we've generated, and I'm going to go here and just run that. And so what I'm doing now is I am scoring in real time all of those records on the likelihood that they're going to have a problem. I'm also showing some of the other uh, status over here, but I've done all that in just a matter of a few seconds, and uh, that's also going across the wire to do all that. But I've been able to predict which units are most likely to uh, to have a problem, and now I can focus my uh, my energies on those units that are, that are most likely to be at risk or at jeopardy. So that's it. That's a real quick demonstration of uh, how to use uh, Oracle um, data mining to solve a, a predictive uh, problem with uh, dealing with remote sensor data. And uh, thank you very much for your time.